Hello and welcome to this Garrettcon training presentation on IGMP, which is the Internet Group Management Protocol, and it's a protocol use, we use to manage multicast traffic on the network. Okay, so uh, if I quickly run through with you the uh, setup we have, if we open the uh, web browser and have a look at the IP camera, we can see we still have our three switches. Uh, they are connected together in a ring, so first switch to the second, second switch here to the third switch and then the third switch goes back around via this third cable back to the first so one to two two to three and then third to the first we have my laptop connected here we have the console cable we're going to use for configuration and in the second port here we have a laptop connected which is sitting on top of the switches if I just the if I just adjust the camera position, so we have a laptop sitting on top of these switches connected to port number two via the LAN cable. And across here we have the laptop which I'm making these recordings on here, connected here, uh, here. Okay, so the purpose of the video is to show you about multicast traffic and how uh, Garrettcom switches can handle that traffic quite efficiently. Uh, Garrettcom uh, supports both uh, standard IGMP that you might use with a switch and a router because typically this function is devolved between two parties. The switch handles uh, the uh, hosts and then it gets the router to make all the decisions for it and then implements those decisions. Um, what Garrettcom did is they took those two separate pieces of functionality and combined them into what the switch can do. So this, a group of Garrettcom switches using IGMP layer 2 can manage multicast traffic without the aid of a, of a router. Um, why do we need management of traffic? So, And why do we need multicast anyway? So uh, we have uh, on here, we're recording these um, switches using an IP camera. Now the IP camera is in this case is sending the uh, all the information to this um, this computer and this computer is asking for it via a unicast address here in the web browser we can see 192.168.40.199 and by logging into that IP address in my web browser I can view the image from this camera now if I wanted to I could go and open up another session and I could log in again to the same camera and get an image now what's the problem with this? The problem is that I'm sending one stream to the computer for this connection and I'm also sending another stream. If I was able to open up a third window I'll be sending a third stream and then a fourth stream and what problems that causes is that the uh, one the camera can only support so many concurrent connections connections at the same time so many people are asking for this image at the same time so there's a bottleneck there and also the link between the camera and the switch becomes a bottleneck that can only support so much traffic so what does multicast do? now multicast is a completely different set of addresses if you remember from your IP address theory we have class B, class forgive me, class A, class B and class C networks okay so I've opened up uh, a web page we're having a look at Wikipedia here and we can see that we got three main classes of IP addresses class A, class B and class C and the way you tell which class an IP address is is by looking at the first octet or the first number before the full stop so you have a number, a dot, a number, a dot and then a, 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 you have four blocks of numbers and three dots and the first block of numbers goes um, anywhere from 0 to 255 and depending on what value that has determines what class of IP address it is now um, bear in mind there's three classes and here are the different differentiators between them now you notice it stops at 223 because when you get on to 224 and above in the first number group bear with me whenever you have an IP address which starts with uh, 224 uh, anywhere from 224.0.0.0 all the way through to 239 dot two five five dot two five five dot two five five these are called uh, multicast addresses just got an email there bear with me a second sorry for that interruption um, two two four all the way up to two three nine in the first octet and, and two five fives all the way across these are all called multicast addresses and the way these work are 
they're not like an individual address so for example we go back to the web browser we can see we're asking to get the information from this individual device via this individual IP address now if you think about multicast more like uh, a group address and the way it works is a lot like um, the radio station in your car so you ch you're driving along in your car and you've got your radio on and you're tuning into a specific frequency a radio frequency and uh, the radio station is pumping that music out on that particular radio frequency over a, a given area and anybody in that area who wants to listen to that all you need to do is tune into that frequency uh, multicast works exactly in the same way so you need to break in your mind um, have a separation between a class A, B and C network address in IP addressing and how those work with a source and a destination and then understand that multicast address work in a completely different way. They are IP addresses but they're handled by IP devices differently. They're used to identify a group. Now the most common use of uh, multicast traffic is for multimedia and in this demonstration that's why we have the cameras here and the two computers because we'll be doing a, a demonstration where we'll be streaming a video connection between the two and um, but bear in mind that multicast traffic is also used by other uh, things such as routing protocols use multicast because they're more efficient than uh, using um, broadcasts to send routing updates between routers. Uh, so there's other uses of multicast but bear in, bear in mind going back to the analogy with the camera this camera can only support so many con connections at one time it can only support so many people asking for its information but when you have multicast that bottleneck goes away and also the switches can efficiently photocopy if you like the traffic which comes in from the camera and copy it to whoever wants to receive it and it can do that very efficiently by only sending the traffic to those people who need to receive it so it's it's not like a broadcast which is a, a message which goes to everybody regardless of whether they want to receive it or not it is in fact a group address where only the people who ask to see uh, who ask to join the group get sent the information and so in that respect multicast traffic can be very efficient now where does IGMP come in? IGMP manages the distribution, the control of which ports send out which multicast traffic, who wants to see it, who doesn't, and it manages the whole multicast traffic on your network to ensure that it's sent around efficiently. If you don't have multicast traffic management, what you effectively have is a broadcast storm if you have too much multicast, because switches without any IGMP will treat multicast traffic just like broadcast traffic. Okay, so you need IGMP to manage that traffic and ensure it gets handled efficiently and Garrett.com have a proprietary IGMP layer 2 which can do all this management without the need of a router, just uh, Garrett.com switches. So we're going to talk you through setting that up and we're going to give you a demonstration. Um, okay, so I, I did dive in a little bit into theory there. I just wanted to give you enough to get going, give you a brief overview and set the scene about how we're going to continue with the rest of the demonstration. So uh, bear with me one second and I'll see you in the command line. Okay, so here we are at the command line of the first switch. If I show you where we are on the uh, topology, so uh, switch 1, 2 and 3 in the ring as I described, we're logging in via the console port to the first switch and we're going to do set this up for IGMP. It's incredibly simple. Just go log in, manager and then manager. All we need to do is go IGMP, IGMP, enable. Mode. We need to specify that it's a layer 2. So this is a Garrett.com's proprietary uh, protocol. The option is uh, either normal or layer 2. Obviously normal will require some router to handle the, uh, make all the decisions about who's joining and who's leaving the group so that the switches can then implement those decisions. But what we've done is we condense that decision making process into the capabilities of the switch so we don't actually need to have the router. So this one will be demonstrating the IGMP layer 2 which is by far the most popular. And um, IGMP between a router and a switch is actually quite a complicated uh, operation. It's actually on a CCMP exam if you do the Cisco certificate certifications. Um, that's it. Our final command is M 
cast disable. So it's in three com enter three commands uh, mcast disabled at mode layer 2 and igmp enabled and they're all under the igmp uh, modes. So um, it's actually already if you enable mode layer 2 it automatically disables uh, mcast. So what, it, what it's doing there is that uh, any um, multicast streams where nobody has asked to see those streams so if we have multicast traffic on the network and nobody's asked to see that traffic it's considered to be an unknown multicast stream and unknown streams are here disabled by default that's what that means mcast disable question mark gives you a brief explanation here okay so um, let's do that let's save that here and we'll hop across to the second switch. So if I show you here, I'm going to uh, remove the console cable and uh, hop over to uh, the second switch. And uh, okay, so I've uh, moved the console port across, uh, and I need to hop back in here. Uh, manager, uh, manager. What I was going to say was that. Um, I've actually picked up from where I left off from the previous video, which I recorded was the uh, how to set up VLANs. So these first two switches are actually set up for VLANs as well. So we actually have Rapid Span Tree, VLANs and IGMP running all together and we'll see that they can all work harmoniously, no problems at all. So uh, sticking with the IGMP configuration, again IGMP used to manage those multicast streams, any IGMP configuration under the IGMP mode and now we can enter the command IGMP uh, enable then MCAS disabled, I always type it in just to be sure it's just a false of habit I guess and the final one is mode uh, uh, layer 2 done, so just uh, make sure that one's done again ok so uh, and that's it, let's have a look around see what other commands we have here uh, we've got quite a few commands in um, this IGMP process. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a separate video for the advanced IGMP configuration because there's some clever tricks there but I just want to give you a, a feel of what you need to do to set up the basics and get it up and running and really um, these advanced commands uh, nine times out of ten you won't need to use them because the defaults work pretty good anyway. So that's that one done. The final thing to do is hop across to the third router and do the same commands over there and what I'm also going to do is I haven't actually set the VLANs on the third router I'm going to do that as well so I'll be back in just a moment okay so that's the third switch set up and ready to go and what I've actually done is I've actually moved the uh, PC connection from on top of the this laptop from uh, the second switch to the third switch try and make this as tough as possible so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the uh, switch network to um, from my, current, my PC here what I'm recording on to this switch and go uh, actually no I'm going to move it back I'll tell you why because uh, the Spanish tree topology goes from here to here and then to here so I want to make it uh, as far through the network as possible so the point is the only way I can get from my computer I'm talking to you now on and the PC on top of these switches is via this switch network here okay so uh, the first step is to make sure that I can ping that uh, computer so if I go to the uh, command prompt and the fire up uh, ping ping uh, 192.168.40.200 I believe it is and yeah we can get that okay so now what we need to do is we need to uh, open up a uh, a um, program called VLC media player so I'm just going to move this across to uh, the middle so you can see it okay so this is VLC media player you can download this for free off the uh, internet uh, double click to open and here we have uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sort of menu bar what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, media and I'm going to walk you through how I'm doing this so we can see it kind of reinforces the concept of multicasting as well so I want to go to advanced file open and um, I'm going to go to add to find the file to play and on my desktop I've got a uh, it's not my favourite video to be honest it's um, a couple of kids they were big Star Wars fans and they decided to recreate a, a lightsaber fight it's something we had knocking around the network which uh, wouldn't violate any copyright laws I don't think so uh, 
it seemed like a nice safe bet. Um, the other thing to notice is that this uh, VLC has a slightly newer version which can uh, the screen might be slightly different from version to version uh, but it, it's just to reinforce the idea, idea so what we're going to do is we selected the file to play here what we need to do to go down to the bottom we have a bunch of options we can even play it locally i.e. The, files, the file is stored on this computer and I'm going to play it and watch it on this computer or what we can do is we can stream the content now it gives you opens up another dialog box which uh, gives you some more options so this is the source of the um, the transmission if you like this is the material we're going to send out and we're going to go to next follow the wizard through and we're going to go here destinations we've got a dialog box here now we're not going to send it to a file but what we are going to do is we're going to send it to a, a UDP stream and add one of those now here, this is where that address came in handy. Do you remember I said before that all of the addresses would start at 224 dot something all the way up to 239 were um, multicast addresses? Well, we're going to use one of those multicast addresses. And what we're going to do is we're going to send it out to that group address, or that frequency if you like, and then anybody on the network who wants to, to see that uh, movie, all he needs to do is open up the uh, connection to that address and then they'll be able to receive it as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to play the video from this computer and uh, watch it on the other laptop. So 224.10.10.10 is the address I always like to use. Now uh, please bear in mind that the addresses, uh, the first few uh, addresses are reserved for like routing protocols and other applications. So 5 and 6 are for SPF, 9 is for uh, for RIP and tennis for EIGRP. So there's a whole bunch which are already in use which you can't use, uh, but starting from 10, you're nice and safe. That one I know is available and anyone can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stream that now, and you'll see that it's playing on my computer. It says it's streaming here, but I can't see anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hop over to the other laptop, and uh, if I open up the browser, you'll see the IP camera and it's going to adjust the camera's position so you can see what I'm doing. Bear with me one second please. Okay so this is the laptop which is sitting on top of the um, it's sitting on top of the switches which is connected to the network and we're going to play it here. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to see clearly uh, me setting up VLC so I'll do that I'll walk you through the steps I'm going to do on this computer so you can see what's going on but I'll still play it over there so if I um, open up another copy of VLC VLC is a fantastic media player it seems to play a lot it's uh, got a lot of useful tools and uh, it's free of charge so here this is what we're going to do on the second P uh, laptop uh, so if you want this is how you play the um, this is how you transmit the stream and this is how you receive the stream here so instead of advanced open file we're going to go open network stream so media open network stream and we're going to enter in the uh, IP address here so 224.10.10.10 and we're just going to tell VLC to listen for that address and play it okay we won't do that here but we're going to do that on another computer so uh, I'll pause the video and set that up. You might as well watch me while I'm doing this. So, uh, open network stream. We're going to specify a protocol from the list, which is UDP. And when we sent it, it was UDP. And, and we sent it to a group address. All we need to do now is tune into that address 10.10.10. .10 and now we should be able to see that video. You might be able to hear the sound as well. I don't know how well it comes through. So you can see we can play in the video here. So this laptop is sending out the video and we are uh if I show the camera, we are seeing it on the second laptop. So just to show you that here, I'm actually gonna give you have a look around. So this laptop is connected to the switches here. And then on the second machine here, I've got it playing. You see the infinite screen, and uh, so we've got it playing here and using the network. So just the uh, camera resolution. Uh, forgive me the uh, focus. And we're going through the network, and then finally we're playing on the 
um, this computer here. Um, just to preview that's working, if I was to, if I just tilt the camera down, um, actually I might back it up slightly so you can see both. Um, if I just disconnect, is that in focus? If I just disconnect this cable, look straight away it stops. So I'm using the network to play the video. If I reconnect the cable, we'll start again. It's a slight delay while things sort themselves out, but it should come back up, and there it goes. So uh, that's the um, that's the whole concept of multicast, and again, it's an efficiency saving. IGMP manages the multicast traffic, and multicast traffic is used to identify a group of people who wish to receive something, and then all you need to do is tune into that group address if you want to receive the routing updates or the stream of media, whatever it is what you want to stream, and. Um, what I'm actually going to do for you now is to show you what happens if we have a network failure. So, um, so going back to the video, if um, if I show you this first, uh, back up slightly again. If I disconnect this section here, this cable here, which is the active path. So I'm going to go from my computer into this switch, and then this switch is going to go to the next switch and then to the next switch and then finally the traffic goes to the laptop. Now if I disconnect this cable I've created a break in the network and the switches will need to relearn how to send the traffic and that will cause a delay. So I want to show you that delay here and there we stopped. But if we give it a moment or two typically this whole process takes between 30 to uh, 30 seconds something around that up to a minute it's, it can be as low as 10 seconds, but it's, it's variable. And there we are, it's come back in. So what's happened is the uh, spanning tree protocol, or the rapid spanning tree protocol, has relearned the network topology. And then the IGMP protocol relearns who wants to hear and receive the multicast traffic, and it's recovered. So we have a slight delay while the IGMP, which is slightly slower than the spanning tree, uh, recovers. So if I, if I reconnect that uh, link there, Again, there should be another delay. There might not be. No. Okay, that's good. But that's basically IGMP. Um, all you need to do is the three simple commands. And uh, a lot of this has been theory and a little bit of demo. And in the next video, I'll show you some of the more, uh, uh, some of the show commands so you can see who's receiving what and some of the commands where you can tweak the performance so that you hardly get any uh, delay at all when you break the link. So, um, We'll show you that in the next video. So I hope this has been interesting for you. I hope it's been helpful. And on behalf of Garrettcom, I'd like to thank you for your time. Goodbye.